Salwetti. Welcome to Beginner's Latin Lesson 5. This is the first of three lessons in which we will be looking at irregular verbs. So what do we mean by irregular verbs? An irregular verb is one which does not follow the regular patterns of any of the defined conjugations. Remember in previous lessons I introduced first and second conjugation verbs. A conjugation is a group of verbs which form tenses in the same way. English itself has many irregular verbs, from to be, which in the first person present tense singular is I am, and then becomes you are in the second person singular, to the verb break, which goes from I break in the present tense to I broke in the simple past tense. It is typically the case that irregular verbs are important verbs and hence the most frequently used verbs in the language, meaning that they are likely to have evolved to take such irregular forms because this was the most convenient way for users of the language to speak. Irregular verbs in Latin convey some of the following ideas. To be, to be able, to want and not want, to prefer, to carry and to go. These verbs, in there is one important idea that we have to discuss and that is compound verbs. Although there are many types of compound verb, the compound verbs which we will be focusing on are those formed by adding a modifier to a verb in order to form a new one. This modifier or modifying prefix can be a preposition, an adjective, an adverb, a noun, or even another verb. Underachieve and overachieve are formed by adding the prepositions under and over to the verb achieve. Foolproof and waterproof, on the other hand, are compound verbs which are formed by using a noun as the modifier. They are formed by, by adding the nouns fool and water respectively to the verb proof. And the prefixes re and d are used to modify the verb activate. Re implies doing something again or a repeated action and d implies reversing a process. Hence we get reactivate which means to activate again and deactivate which means to reverse the activation of something. Now that we've covered compound verbs, we can get stuck into some Latin. A number of the irregular verbs we are about to encounter are compound verbs formed by prefixing another irregular verb, introducing the verb sum, meaning I am. Here are its four principal parts, sum, esse, hui, futurus. Notice that, notice that its fourth principal part, futurus, is a future active participle rather than a past participle as we're used to seeing the fourth principal part. Futurus means going to be or about to be. Furthermore, sum gives us many compound verbs. These four are just a few and all of them are formed using a preposition as the prefix. Ad sum, which is the preposition ad, meaning to or towards, plus sum translates as I arrive, I attend, I am present. Absum, which comes from ab, meaning away or from, has the English translation, I am away, I am absent, or I am distant. De sum and pri sum are two other verbs formed by adding prefixes to sum. For completeness, here are the principal parts of these four verbs. Note that in the third and fourth principal parts of absum, ab becomes a long a. Also in the second principal part of desum, the first e becomes a short e instead of a long e when followed by another e. Now let's conjugate sum in the present tense. Sum, I am, s, you singular are, est, he, she, it, is, sumus, we are, estis, you plural are, sunt, they are. Weary agricolae sunt, the men are farmers. Remember, weir is a second declension noun and agricola is a first declension noun but both are masculine. Also note that agricolae is plural nominative and not accusative. This is because agricolae is a noun which describes the men's professions, 
it is not an object which is receiving the action of the verb here. This is because to be is a copular verb, sometimes called a copulative or linking verb. It is a verb which refers to the subject and takes a noun or adjective or the predicate predicate refers to the subject and is not something which is being acted upon by the subject. It is also in the nominative and not the accusative, as a direct object would be. Other verbs which function the same way are to appear, to become and to seem, but there are many more. Now let's turn our attention to possum. Possum, which means I am able, is another compound verb of sum, formed by joining the adjective potis, meaning capable or able, and sum. Possum is typically conjugated exactly the same way as sum, but with a pot prefix. However, there are some exceptions. For example, ts becomes ss, so we have possum and possumus rather than potsum and potsums. Also, tf becomes t, that's why we get potui, I was able, rather than potfui. The third rule is one which we'll revisit when we learn other tenses, as it is not applicable at the moment. Here is the present tense active conjugation of possum. Possum, I am able. Potes, you singular are able. Potest, he, she, it is able. Possumus, we are able. Potestis, you plural are able. Possunt, they are able. To summarise, this lesson has introduced irregular verbs and compound verbs. I have talked about sum, which means I am in Latin. Sum, sum is a copular verb which takes a subject and joins it with an adjective or another noun. The word the subject is being joined to is called a subject complement or a pre- We also discussed the compounds of sum, pos- including possum. In subsequent lessons, we will look at follow, I want, and its compounds no lo and malo. We will also explore other irregular Latin verbs. Thank you for watching.